Upon its release in 1998, Unreal from Epic Mega Games, now Epic Games, entered a gaming landscape where first-person shooter enthusiasts had already spent around 6 months immersed in Quake 2. With a freshly purchased copy of Unreal in hand, a sense of anticipation and curiosity takes hold, all while the unremarkable setup process gives no indication of what is about to unfold. The initial glimpse of the meticulously crafted 3D environment and the way the dynamic lighting plays across the surfaces would ignite a mix of astonishment and excitement. The player would find themselves drawn into the immersive world, feeling a sense of wonder towards the revolutionary graphics and the promise of the gaming experience ahead. Gasping for life, the character under your control in Unreal regains consciousness within a wrecked penitentiary spacecraft on the planet Napali. Prisoners 8, 4, 9, escaping. You assume the identity of Prisoner 849, an enduring moniker assigned to you, embarking on a journey to escape the confines of the ship and venture into the planet's exterior. Soon you understand that the indigenous tribe of Nali and their home planet have been invaded by the Scar, a race of brutish yet technologically advanced reptilian humanoids. Napali is one of the rare planets in the universe which are rich in pteridium, a mineral that is found as light blue crystals, possessing a high energy yield which are the reason for the presence of the Scar. Although not as fast-paced as Quake 2, Unreal established a new standard for a captivating solo campaign, accompanied by revolutionary graphics. An advanced software renderer that allowed software features as rich as the hardware renderers of the time provided the necessary depth for the player to immerse into the world of Unreal. But of course, if you wanted to get the absolute best Unreal experience, then you needed 3DFX Voodoo graphics. The Glide API, which emerged as the dominant interface towards the end of the game's development, provided support for hardware-accelerated 3D rendering and features not possible at an acceptable frame rate using the software renderer. The original Voodoo graphics board was equipped with one frame buffer and one texture mapping chip, both clocked at 50 MHz. Each of them had access to 2 MB of video memory, at least on most consumer cards. The total video memory available was therefore just 4 megabytes. In today's video, I want to find out if Unreal benefits from more graphics memory. 6 and 8 megabyte Voodoo cards are extremely difficult to come by, and if you do, you will find them accompanied by a ridiculous high price tag. Fortunately, there is a way to upgrade a common 4 megabyte 3DFX Voodoo accelerator to 8 megabytes. Recently, I created two memory boards for this Maxi Gamer 3D, which is now upgraded to 8 MB total video memory. I understand when some of my viewers say that this mod is completely useless and the Voodoo does not benefit from the extra memory. You may be right, neither Tomb Raider nor Quake benefited from an 8 MB Voodoo card, but it's not about the usefulness or benefits of this mod. It is the satisfied curiosity and the possibility to learn and to achieve such a feat. There are already people coming up with their own ideas creating upgrade modules for 3DFX Voodoo cards. Be it useful or not, it is about solving a puzzle with a clear goal in mind. Even I continue to think of how to make this mod better and accessible to more cards and people who like to tinker with this old technology. With that out of the way, let me introduce you to the test systems I will use in today's video. When Unreal was released in 1998, the Pentium 2 with up to 400 MHz was already available in the market, but I'm sure there were still plenty of Pentium and Pentium MMX systems around. Therefore, the first system I'm using is the ASUS P55T2P4 with a Pentium 200 MMX and 128 MB of system memory. Then we move on to a slot 1 motherboard with a first appearance on my channel, the Gigabyte GA6BXC. I will use this motherboard with a Pentium 2 333, which operates identical to the Pentium MMX at a bus frequency of 66 MHz. Later, I will swap the CPU for a Pentium 3 500, which requires the bus frequency to change to 100 MHz. 
And for the fourth and last test system, I will use the ASUS P3BF with a Pentium 3 1000. You have already seen the 8MB MaxiGamer 3D, which I will use at the standard frequency of 50MHz, but also overclock it to 56MHz. At 57MHz, the card shows artifacts. I think the card is limited by the memory soldered to the board, which is rated for 50MHz only. The 4MB model I am using today is also new on this channel. This card had a severe condition of lifted pins. I fixed the card a few days ago, but wasn't able to prepare a video. I do have the footage however, so maybe I am going to work on a repair video featuring this card very soon. This card, which I think is from Gainward, is different from all the other Voodoos I have, because it comes with 35 nanoseconds or 66 MHz rated memory chips. This is probably the reason it reaches a frequency of up to 60 MHz before artifacting. I did get requests to test Unreal in game, but it is difficult to come up with repeatable results and measurements. Therefore, I will benchmark all configurations using the intro scene of Unreal, the castle flyby. And to have another point of reference, I also tested each configuration using 3D Mark 99's race benchmark. This is the only 3D scene where I could notice a significant improvement of the 8MB Voodoo over the 4MB version so far. First, let's have a look at the Voodoo with 4MB at the stock frequency of 50MHz. 3D Mark shows a significant improvement when we move to the Pentium 2 from the Pentium 200MMX with a score around 40% higher. Further increases in CPU frequency does yield better scores, but by no means as impressive. Unreal also benefits moving from a Pentium 200MMX to a Pentium 2, although now we have to be satisfied with an improvement of only 13%. For another 5% on top, you would have to upgrade to a Pentium 3 1GHz. While keeping our attention on the Unreal results, let's see what an overclocked 60MHz Voodoo card would deliver. That is a massive improvement. Even the Pentium 200MMX benefits by around 13%. And from the Pentium 2 onwards, the overclocked Voodoo card improves scores by 18-20%. That is an almost linear scaling. In stark contrast, the 3D Mark 99 results do not benefit from the elevated Voodoo frequency. The results are identical to the card clocked at 50 MHz. When we move on to the 8 MB Voodoo card, even when the card is clocked at the stock frequency of 50 MHz, we can see a large gain across all CPUs for the 3D Mark 99 race benchmark. The Pentium 200 MMX can increase the score by over 15%. And with a whopping 27% better score, the Pentium 2 clocked at 333 MHz benefits the most in this benchmark. In Unreal, we do see slightly higher scores compared to the 4 MB Voodoo card. But I will rearrange the results in a moment to have a better understanding how the different memory configurations affect the performance. Overclocking the card to 56 MHz will result in more frames per second, but the results are a few frames shy of the 60 MHz clocked 4 MB Voodoo card. So then, let's have a look how different memory configurations behave for each CPU. First up is our weakest CPU, the Pentium 200 MMX. As we have seen before, 3D Mark 99 does not seem to improve the score with a higher frequency of the Voodoo card. Extra memory, however, does seem to lift the performance significantly. Unreal paints a different picture, however. A Pentium 200 MMX in combination with a standard Voodoo card reaches a bit over 18 frames per second. Doubling the memory to 8 MB pushes the frame rate past 20. Definitely measurable, but still lower compared to an overclocked 4 MB card, which reaches almost 21 frames per second. An overclock to 56 MHz pushes the 8 MB Voodoo card into the leading position at 21.5 frames per second. We see a similar picture when moving to the Pentium 2 333. The 8 MB model does outperform a standard 4 MB Voodoo card. Unfortunately, the speed gain is just below one extra frame per second. Overclocking both cards to their respective maximum pushes the 4 MB slightly ahead. 
The 8 MB card, which is clocked 4 MHz slower compared to the 4 MB card at 60 MHz, takes the second spot in the performance ranking. Moving on to the Pentium 3 500 does not improve the situation for the 8 MB card. It even strengthens the case for an overclocked 4 MB Voodoo card, which outperforms the 8 MB model now by more than 1 frame per second. Clearly, this is due to the better memory and therefore the higher overclock the 4 MB card can achieve. But we also see that doubling the video memory has almost no impact on performance anymore. It is measurable, but with higher CPU frequencies, the small benefits seem to diminish. You may already be able to predict what the results will be when we move on to the 1 GHz Pentium 3. At this CPU frequency, the benefit of the extra memory is almost non-existent. Sadly, I cannot clock the 8 MB card as high as the 4 MB card due to the memory that is soldered to the board, but I would assume that both cards would perform identical. I wondered if the 8 MB card would have made a difference in a system back in 1998. There is one modern component that may be partly to blame for the results we got today. The hard disk. I'm using an SD to IDE adapter and a non-mechanical SD card. Maybe an 8 MB Voodoo card would be more beneficial when textures have to be loaded from a slower spinning hard disk. So, I reinstalled Windows, Unreal, drivers and everything else that was required. And the results were almost identical to what we have seen in the charts today. Maybe there was half a frame less across all configurations, not really worth mentioning. But definitely no performance advantage for the 8 MB Voodoo card. So, then I guess that is it. There are no real benefits of using an 8 MB Voodoo card in Unreal. Unless you want to play the game at a resolution of 800x600, which is possible now due to the higher frame buffer memory. Increasing the resolution past 640x480 is not possible on a 4 MB Voodoo card. While playing at a higher resolution does increase the visual quality of Unreal, we quickly notice that the Voodoo card does not possess enough performance to deliver an enjoyable experience. With settings unchanged, the Voodoo delivers around 12.8 frames per second. We could go ahead and decrease texture quality and remove some of the lighting and graphic effects. Unreal's appearance changes a lot with our shiny surfaces. And I must admit, this look isn't too bad. Nevertheless, we still don't get enough performance for a smooth castle flyby demo. At 14.6 frames per second, we see choppiness throughout the entire benchmark. There is one more setting we can change. Dynamic lighting. Unreal was one of the first games that gained its visual appeal by implementing dynamic lighting. We can disable this feature by toggling one single switch. And then you get a totally different game. I re-enabled all other features. High texture details, shiny surfaces and other graphic effects. All this at a resolution of 800 by 600. And all this on an original Voodoo card with 8 megabytes. It is unreal, but it sure doesn't look like unreal. With no dynamic lighting effects, we regain a lot of performance. The flyby demo finishes with 21.6 compared to 12.8 frames per second we got initially. However, Unreal loses one of its main features, creating a dark and immersive atmosphere. Let me illustrate this by showing you one very iconic scene in the Rajigar mine. A scene you will encounter early on in the game and which is the perfect example how Unreal uses dynamic lighting to create an atmosphere you will never forget. What a memorable scene this is early on in the game. 
Is it worth trading such a graphical masterpiece, which was created 25 years ago, for a higher resolution on an original Voodoo card just to get an acceptable frame rate? Well, see for yourself what the game has become when dynamic lighting is switched off. The sound of light switching off is there, but the corridor remains bright and illuminated. The attacking Scar Scout, which appears out of nowhere, is just another enemy that needs to be defeated. In this state, the scene is not memorable at all. Lighting is so important throughout the entire game. It is what makes Unreal. The conclusion is that Unreal does benefit slightly from an 8MB Voodoo card, especially when using lower clocked CPUs. However, overclocking a Voodoo card will result in similar if not better performance. As I said at the beginning of this video, upgrading a Voodoo card with more memory may be useless. But Unreal is the first game I have tested where we can measure a very slight improvement over a regular 4MB Voodoo card. And with this, we have reached the end of today's video. If you enjoyed the content, please like, leave a comment and subscribe to my channel, so you will get notified whenever there is something new to watch. Also, check out my Patreon if you want to support me directly. I will use your contributions to purchase old hardware, mostly broken stuff that I will try to fix or revive. Thank you for your support and the opportunity to share this extremely satisfying hobby with you. Thanks for watching and I will see you in one of my other videos.